Jono, welcome. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Good to be here. Good stuff, mate. Right, we've got some questions for you. I'm just going to dig them out. Brilliant. On here, right, first of all, we've got a question from AD Book. AD says, what areas will we be looking to strengthen in the team? Well, you fire away. Well, as, as a manager, you're always, you're always looking to uh, score goals, aren't you? So, um, an excited fan. So, obviously, you know, um, Katz has been announced that he's staying, which is brilliant. And obviously, Kulo as well, who can score goals and be creative. But um, I'd like to have, have another striker in the ranks, you know, maybe uh, a, a bigger guy, a target guy who's good at link up play, but can also bang goals in as well and, and uh, mess defences around a bit. But on the flip side to that, you know, um, defensively, you know, um, don't want to be conceding many goals. The less you concede, the better. Then we don't have to score as many. But um, looking at this, the centre halves as well and the defence, because um, we've got a few defenders, but there's, you know, um, we haven't started pre-season yet. So I'm looking forward to getting getting to to know the boys and have a look at them. But yeah, I think you know, um, probably more attacking. Uh, than defence at the moment because it's vital um, to score goals in this league. So I'm um, definitely after a striker without a shadow of a doubt. But obviously, um, defensively as well, um, we're, we're looking looking at that as well. So um, yeah, um, a little bit of both really, to be honest. Good stuff, mate. And that leads on. When can we expect uh, news on new players or re retained players or new signings? That's from John Tilly. Um, before obviously he, he left the club um, had agreed a few few deals I think with a few of the boys so um, uh, like I've, I think I've mentioned to you before I've spoke to all the players um, a lot of positive feedback and um, they're looking forward to starting pre-season we're going to start pre-season a little bit earlier um, so I can get to know the players and they can get to know me and um, I've spoke to all the players and the guys that Daz has obviously offered contracts to I said well listen Come and show me what you're all about. Show me that you want it. Show, show me that you want to be part of the, the squad and the team. And, um, you know, I'll have a look at you. And um, hopefully I like you and, you know, it'd be easy and the deal will will stand. But on the flip side, so that they might not, might, might not like me. So uh, they might think uh, I'm a load of uh, crap and uh, not a very good coach and stuff like that. So um, it works both ways. But, yeah, there's players, obviously, I want to keep. Um, I've spoke to a lot of the, uh, a lot of the players who I know and they've given me their feedback and I've spoke to quite a few fans, obviously spoke to the board as well. Um, but everyone will start with a clean slate. I've told them, you know, it's a fresh start for everybody. If they want to be part of my plans and part of the future, they've got to show me in pre-season, pre but they want it and they want to play for Scarborough and, you know, obviously try and get us promoted. Brilliant stuff, mate. That sounds good. Right, third question. With your football contacts, can you can we expect to see any interesting loan signings? That's from Keith Jones. I hope so. Yeah, I've got you know a lot of contacts in the game, and um, especially um, you know um, clubs around Yorkshire as well. You know, like Leeds and Middlesbrough and Sheffield United and Chef Chef Wednesday and Huddersfield and, and teams like that. Um, you know, uh, obviously, I was not in Forest under twenty one assistant manager for, for a year and Yorkshire under eighteens. For a year, so I'm hoping, you know, all the coaches that I've met over a, a long period of time since I've been coaching, which is probably about seven years now, can help me out with the odd favour here and there. Especially, especially if we get a few injuries as well, you know, where uh, I can call upon them and try and get some of their younger players who need experience, who, who are good players, um, some match match uh, experience. And um, but they have to be the right fit. They have to be the right player. Um, I wouldn't just take anybody. Um, I'd have to do, you know, my research and watch them and see if they're going to bring value to the team because there's no point bringing anybody in who's who's not going to affect the squad or, you know, um, be better than what we've already got. So, um, yeah, definitely got contacts, obviously. And, um, you know, um, I'm sure hopefully a few of the coaches I've met over over the time and on coaching courses um, will help me out in the future, fingers crossed. Good stuff, yeah. I mean, this one leads on as well. Which managers of who you have worked on do you, do you admire most? And what have you observed from them that you will bring to Scarborough and your team next season? That's from Mark in Stockholm. Well, that, that's a brilliant question. I mean, it's it's a, it's so difficult for me to answer that because I've had so many great managers. Obviously, Alex Ferguson, the greatest manager <laughs> of all, and um, you know, um, you know, his record speaks for itself. I think the difference with with Alex, he was, you know, probably 
a more hands hands on manager with the players. He wasn't really, he didn't really take the training and stuff, but he's obviously management management skills was second to none. Um, Roy Hodgson, um, who obviously managed, who I had at Fulham, England manager, he, you know, was absolutely unbelievable. Attention to detail, a lot of shape, a lot of organisation, discipline, you know, without the ball. And then um, probably Tony Mowbray at, at West Brom as well. The, you know, the year we lost in the playoff final to Derby, and the year um, we got back promote, promoted promoted to the Premier League. I think we scored over 100 goals both them seasons. So, you know, he's another one that um, you know I like to think I can learn a little bit from him because he was um, very similar to to Roy and Alex Ferguson as in out of possession being well organized you know being hard to be um, you know um, putting a shift in for the team um, helping teammates out when they were having a bad game you know tracking runners putting your body on the line blocks headers tackles 50-50s um, but also the other side of it is, you know, when 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 you do win the ball, can we be composed in possession? Can we, you know, can we pass the ball with a purpose? Can we break the lines? Can we get the clever players in little pockets or out wide? You know, where they're in a one v one situation, taking players on and getting crosses in the box or cutbacks or little one twos with the strikers to get to get shots away. Because at the end of the day, you know, our fans don't want to see a boring team that just sits back, nice and organised and. You know, not, not doing much else. You know, they want to see that, but they also want to see a bit of flair and a bit of speed and a bit of creativity. And hopefully, you know, all the managers I've worked with, like the three I've mentioned, and Brian Robson and Steve McLaren and who else? Billy Davis, who had not Forest, who was very good as well. Um, I, you know, can take bits from them, um, from their training sessions and stuff like that. And you know, the way they handle game day as well. Um, you know, I'm not inexperienced at all because I've been coaching for a long time. You know, I've been playing games at different level. you know, managing games at different levels. So it's all about recognising what the opponent's trying to do to you on the pitch, you know, and trying to come up with ideas to um, nullify them and, you know, uh, try and take an advantage of, of the, the team and trying to, you know, out, outwit them. It's a game of chess, really, but, you know, you have to have the basics, basics in place first. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, there's been quite a few uh, questions about uh, your shape and the tactics you'll play. Um, are you someone that goes forward and attacks things, or do you sit back and just take your time? Or no, well, I don't like to. I like my team to be on the front foot. To be fair, um, you know, like we talked about being organised and disciplined and all that. That that's a that's a given for me. You know, um, tracking runners and working hard with the opponents um, is an absolute given. That's that should come from all the players from within. You know, you have to have that in a drive to, to do that anywhere. Um, and if, if they don't, I'll be certainly pushing them to have that. And um, if, if they don't show that, they probably won't be in the team, to be honest. Um, but no, I like to be on the front foot. You know, sometimes you can't high press from minute one to, to 90 minutes. It's just impossible. But, you know, hopefully I, once I've worked with the team, um, we'll have a structure in place where, you know, the players will know when to press and when not to press, you know, trigger points and... Um, and but I like my teams to attack. I like my, my teams to, especially in the final third, is be creative and try things. And you know, I would never have a go at my players for you know trying to take somebody on one v one in in the final third and get a shot away or little clever one twos or you know trying to get to the byline doing cutbacks or you know um, you know coming inside and playing a one two and striking getting a shot away and going over the bar. Um, I want to see shots. I want to see crosses. I want to see pace. Um, I want to see players take players on. But as soon as, you know, it breaks down, you know, I'm after the basics, what all managers are after, you know, back into shape quickly. Um, can you nick the ball higher? Um, but it takes time. You know, it's not going to happen in two or three weeks. Um, you know, it takes time working with the players and for them to get to know what I really want. And um, But, yeah, definitely, um, definitely, I, I would say um, I like uh, attacking players. Um, attacking players that aren't lazy, I would like to describe it. So attacking players that put a shift in for the team as well. So um, yeah, um, hopefully I can bring that to the table. Great stuff. Sounds very good, mate. Looking forward to it. Right. Do you know players around these leagues? And uh, do you think you'll have any difficulties bringing bodies in? That's from Steve. No, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> if you've seen my phone over the last... Uh, Three or four days, it's, it's gone absolutely crazy. I don't think I'll have problems. Uh, players wanting to come to Scarborough and playing for me. I think there's quite a lot of interest 
obviously, you know, we talked about it earlier, it's getting the right players in with the right mentality, obviously wanting to play for, for the club, wanting to play for me, wanting to play for the teammates. want to try and get a good team spirit because I think most of the successful teams are played in. Um, the squad, you know, especially nowadays, it's more about the squad than it is the actual starting eleven. Um, is getting the right characters in the building or the right characters who want to work hard, but also want to learn as well and get better as players and, you know, take the club forward and even take, take their own you know, where uh, careers forward, you know, uh, young, hungry players who maybe got a proper point to prove to people who even have to, you know, you know, would like to come to us and play for us and have the platform to play games and get experience to take their careers to, to the next level. You know, if I got two or three players who had been released from 20, you know, 23 somewhere, a club in Yorkshire, a higher a level, and, and they come to me and I, I, I teach them and try and pass my experience on and they help the t- our team get promotion and do well and, and get a better, you know, a club for, for them in the future, a higher level, brilliant. They've done well for me. Yeah. I'll, I'll have helped them and, you know, it would be a, a win-win situation for everybody. But, uh, um, yes, yeah, I mean, first first thing is giving my play, the players who are already there a chance um, in training, in pre-season, see if they're up, up to the tax, see if they, they want to learn, see if they can take ideas on. And... Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll be bringing players in for training and games as well, pre-season, to have a look at them and, and see if they're the right fit. Good stuff. Similar sort of question from Adam Eastick here. He says quite a lot of non-league football is about having contacts within the game and knowledge of players at this level when it comes to transfers. What's your base contacts like at this level, especially coming from a high, higher football pyramid level? Yeah, good question. Obviously, you know, a lot of my football was played in in the Premier League and Championship, but, you know, I've got a lot of contacts, obviously, I was at York City under 18 for a year. I also was at Taddy, um, you know, a bit lower, lower than Scarborough for three, three, three and a half years. Um, know a lot of people, lower leagues as well. Um, Players-wise, no problems. Got so many people who, who can ask about players. Um, you know, I've got one of my best mates, Richard Creswell, who's who sort of like works for an agency as well. A lot of clubs... Um, uh, in Yorkshire, well, all over England, really. Um, in the eight, and he looks after a lot of players in the eighteens and twenty threes and stuff. And um, yeah, basically, if if there's a player who who gets uh, put to me, I, I I've, I've probably got five or six people I can phone and ask about them who, who will know what they like and what they like as uh, players and and as people as well. And um, yeah, I, I, there's no problems with that at all. Good stuff, mate. All right, next question. This is from Denny Ingram. Is it true? Can, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> is it true you can turn water into wine? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming from somebody. I can't believe Denny said it. <laughs> You're having my life here, aren't you? <laughs> That's no, Denny's good. a great guy. He's yeah. a great guy, but I can't, honestly, I can't do it. But there was a few of my clubs, I think Fulham, um, Nottingham Forest and West Brom used to say I used to walk on water and stuff like that. But I, I honestly can't and I can't, t- I can't turn water into wine either. <laughs> No worries, man. That's the last question. You'd be pleased to know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see the development of the under-19 squad through to the first team opportunities as local players make as local players can make all the difference? That's from Keith Jones. Yeah, well, listen. Um, I always say if the player's good enough, um, you know, they've got to be given a chance. I think um, you know we've we've had a chat with um, Paul, and uh, you know, I've said to him, I said, listen, you know, if there's any players that you think are worth me taking a look at and training and uh, pre-season to, to send them over because, you know, I'd be delighted to have them in. Um, sometimes, you know, as a young player, you have a sink or swim. You know, I remember when I was a young kid at York and um, 18, 19, and my manager at the time, Alan Little, said to me I was going to Man U to train for a week. Um, a lot of people might have grumbled, but um, I had the uh, sort of like mentality where I went into the United dressing room, which was full of... <laughs> international stars like David Beckham, Roy Keane, Peter Schmeichel, yeah. uh, who else was there, you know, um, Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs and people like that. And, you know, I had that mentality where I thought I was as good as them and, you know, trained really well and got signed up for them. So for me, it's having that mentality. So if there's a young kid who's got potential at under 19's level, 16, 17, 18 years old, that when they do come in to train, train with me in the first team, that they have that mentality, they're good enough and, and they show, obviously, me and, my assistant, Mike Lingham, um, that they're good enough to to be in the squad and be part of it. And 
and, and then it's having the right patience with them because some young kids develop a little bit later so they might have the you know the technical ability and uh, the potential but they might be you know maybe lacking a little bit of strength or lacking a bit of pace or whatever what which would come because from 18 to 19 um, you know, from that, sorry, from 19 to 21, 22, you, you, you sort of like grow as a man. You know, I was probably still quite weak at 18, 19 when I first went to Man U, and I, I probably filled out when I was 20, 21 uh, in my last year at Man United, probably, and then going to Middlesbrough. You know, I was probably more of a more of a more of a man as they, as they would say. Um, so yeah, you got to give them a bit of time as well. But yeah, if they're good enough, uh, they'll be more than welcome to come and train with me, and I'll give them a my honest opinion and try and help them out as, mu as much as I can. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Michael Ingham there. Obviously, you brought him in as assistant manager. That was announced uh, earlier today. Um, yeah. yeah talk, talk, to me about, talk to me about uh, Michael, first of all. And is, is that going to be your coaching staff as a whole or have you got more people coming in? No, I mean, uh, at the moment, um, Michael Ingham's coming as assistant manager, stroke goalkeeping coach, stroke number two keeper. So, as a grip, first and foremost, he's a first brilliant number two to have on the bench yeah. obviously well for experience um, I think he's second um, clean sheet holder for York City I think by four games or something like that so his experience is absolutely vital uh, as a number two and obviously if we get a youngish keeper in um, as the main keeper he, he'll be absolutely brilliant with him because he's honestly a top class goalkeeper coach um, he's been working he worked at York with me when I was doing the 18s um, and he's been at I2I for five years. Um, he, he's a very, very good uh, goalkeeping coach, first and foremost. And uh, thirdly, he's, uh, he's an absolutely brilliant guy, you know, trustworthy, experienced, knows the lower leagues, obviously been playing for Taddy, captain of Taddy for the last four or five years. So he knows a lot of players as well. Um, and what I like about him is he, he, tells, you, he tells you how it is. So if, um, if he doesn't think I'm doing something right, he will tell me which I wanted. And uh, if he disagrees with me, he'll tell me as well, which I wanted. And we'll probably have a few arguments because um, we have a few arguments at work as well about certain things. So uh, that's why I brought him in to challenge me and, you know, um, and tell me, tell me his thoughts. So I didn't want someone just to come in and say, you know, oh, yes, Gaffer, yes, Gaffer. Yeah, you're doing the right thing, Gaffer. I wanted someone who would challenge me and he, he certainly will do that. And I'm really happy to get him on board. Uh, regarding other coaching staff, um, yeah, I would like to bring someone else in. At the moment, it's it's a little bit tricky, but I'm in no rush because I like to do a lot of the hands-on coaching anyway. Um, I like to take a lot of the sessions anyway, so um, I'm in no rush for that. But at the moment, Jimmy will and Blotty will be helping me for the time being, um, just over pre-season, stuff like that, because obviously when I took the job, I had a few, few things that um, I needed to be at because, you know, I didn't expect to be named Scarborough manager uh, straight away. So I've got a few things, engagements that I, there's no way I can get out of. So, um, yeah. So at the moment, Ingy and uh, um, Jimmy and uh, Blotty will be helping me um, for the time being through pre-season. And then I, I would like to see how they are as people. Well, I know Jimmy and Blotty anyway, but I'd like to see what they're like as coaches and what they're like around the, the change room with, with the lads and stuff like that. Um, but that'll be subject to change as well. Um, if I can get someone else in as well, which um, I am looking to do, but um, it's it's quite hard, you know, when a lot of people have got full-time jobs as well and commitments to uh, try and get them on full board. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Right, next question. Which one piece of advice given to you in your, during your playing career will you pass on to your team at Borough? That's from Mark Appleby. And he also said, did I teach you anything at Manor Road Park? <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> well, he definitely didn't teach me out. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, no, I remember him from uh, Manor Road Park. We used to have some great times down there uh, playing football every day for seven or eight hours a day. And um, yeah, great, good guy. Um, the best piece of advice actually was, I would say, probably from, from Alex Ferguson when I first went into United was um, always, always be early, always do extra, or always stay after training and do a little bit extra, and always try and be the best trainer as every day you come to training he said you might not be the best trainer every day but if you give if you go in with the mindset of you'd be the best trainer every day then most days you'll be at a good seven or eight out of ten um and also in games he said when you go out to play games always try to be that best player on the pitch and I always I always took that for the rest of my career to be fair so 
you know, um, I, you know, throughout my career, I used to always get in an hour and a half before training. I always used to do extra in the gym, sit ups, press ups, mm. uh, chin ups, and stuff, and um, prehab and stuff, and massages. I used to always have massages before training, um, and then I always used to do a little bit before training. I always used to do a little bit extra, extra after, and I always used to um, look after my body afterwards as well. You know, if I had you know knocks and stuff like that, I wouldn't rush straight off home. I'd you know ice things. I'd get massages. I'd seek physios. Um, and I always took that probably from my whole career that where you have to be the best trainer every day and the best player in every game and obviously you're not the best trainer in train every day and you're not the best every time you go out and play a football game but um, it helped me have, have, have a good career a long career and um, you know um, a, lot of, a lot of managers trusted me probably because of my attitude and commitment so um, I think um, it's probably I would say the best bit, bit of advice I've had um, from a manager yeah, it's so true, Zach, because, um, you know, when I uh, covered Scarborough and Michael Coulson was coming through, he'd stay behind and do extra shooting and extra work afterwards. And he sort of went like that afterwards, didn't he? So it, it is a very yeah. true statement, that. Yeah, it is, yeah. And I think, um, I think you know, when you, a lot of players, when they make it like pro, at the top top level, they probably slack off a little bit and maybe not do as much extra. Um, and I found in the academy, academies, actually, you know, when I was working at, Nottingham Forest and York. I think a prime example for me would be Ben Godfrey. So when I first went into York, Ben Godfrey was um, a young player. I'd been in a couple of weeks. And I turned around to the academy manager, um, Andy McMillan at the time, and um, Richard Creswell at the time. He was there, part of the first team staff. And I said to him, I said to them, God has got everything, but he's just so laid back. And he's so, because it was so easy for him because he was the best player by far, but he would just go through the motions. So I had a chat with Goddard and I said, listen, Goddard, I said, because I think he was a first year YT, and I said to him, listen, you're only 16, just stroke 17. I said, listen, I said the same thing that Alex Ferguson said to me. I said, listen, if you train like you're the best player and you put a shift in every day in training and you do the same in games, I said, you'll be in the first team squad in six months. I'll be knocking on the manager's door and saying, listen, you need to take a look at this kid. And fair play to him. You know, he did and he got in the first team squad and, he was doing well and I spoke to Dean Carly at Norwich to come and have a look at him and uh, he ended up going to Norwich for 250 grand, which was an absolute snip at the time, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I went back, I went to United for, I think, 500 grand and 500 grand on appearances way back in 98. So for him to go for 250 grand was just an absolute snip. And uh, obviously he's, he's took that mindset into Norwich. Same kind of thing, wanting to get better, doing extra. Um, obviously, Dean Kiley was there at the time and he said he was a great lad, great trainer, um, listened to coaches, was like a sponge, did extra before and after. And he's just kicked on. He's kicked on. He's got his move to Everton, what was it, 22 million or something. And, and now he's, he's part of the uh, preliminary squad for the England uh, in the Euros, isn't he? So it just yeah. goes to show that being like that and having, having that attitude and wanting to learn and listening to people and... Um, respecting people who 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 because who, some people you can give them an opinion and it goes in one ear and out the other do you know what I mean it's life in it I suppose but you know he took it in he, he wanted to get better and you know he, he's got his rewards now you know he's earning big big money at Everton playing I think he's just got player of the uh, young player of the year at Everton and he's in the England squad so it just goes to show definitely mate definitely Right, moving on to this season. This is made the book again. What's your hopes for this season ahead? Well, well obviously promotion. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I want to win every single game. I know it's not going to happen like that. There's a lot of work to do. I'm not naive enough to... I've been in the game a long time, but um, obviously I want to finish top. Um, I'll be take, I'm not one of these managers who sets targets. So I won't be setting points target. I've had a few managers in the past who have gone, right, they, they break the season down into bulks and go, right, we need this so many points from this bulk, this so many points from this bulk. Not for me. I think the best managers and what managers talk about at the top level is one game at a time. So it's preparing that week for that one game and obviously trying to get that best result. Um, and that's how I'll approach it. I'll approach it as uh, one game at a time and do the best we can in that week that week in training and preparing the players for that, that game at the weekend and hopefully uh, putting a good performance that gets us the three points um, at the end of that, that Saturday and uh, or midweek game, whatever it is. And hopefully if we can win 
as many games as I'd like to win, we'll be we'll be near the top. Um, but yeah, um, I would love to uh, win the league and uh, get promotion. But listen, it's hard, and there's a few full time clubs in there and yeah. some big clubs. Um, you know, we talked about the other day about South Shields. I think they've been training two times a week for the last four weeks. I think the manager's given them two weeks off. Then they're going to train again for another four weeks before pre-season even starts. So um, it's a little bit different because they're full-time, whereas our lads are obviously have all got full-time jobs and commitments. So um, I know it's not going to be easy, but, you know, if you don't reach for the stars, you don't get them, do you? So. 100%. Yeah, definitely. Good stuff, mate. Right, Andy Kent has said, is it difficult to build a squad of players? Um training them and organising them to play the, uh, the way that it is capable of playing on 3G at the same time, right, 3G one week and then getting results on varying different surfaces the next week. So I think what, what the question is there is, obviously yeah. our games are on 3G, uh, yeah. you're going to be playing on some ploughed fields occasionally. So is, is it yeah. difficult to train them for both? Yeah, that's a brilliant question. Yeah, I think um, it is, it is, it's not ideal, but... Um, I think, you know, what we talked about before, you know, the basics of, you know, um, the shape of the team, the organisation, the commitment from the players, the willingness to win, um, the will willingness to play in the right areas. Because let's be honest, this league's not all about playing out from the back and pretty football and keeping the ball for 300 passes before they score a goal. So um, the same the same things will apply is, you know, winning your individual battles, working harder than the opponent, winning your 50-50s, uh, winning your second balls, playing in the right areas, getting the balls into the box when we get into you know good areas of the pitch, scoring goals. And the same thing will apply on the grass as well. Obviously, yeah, we might be playing on pitches that have got a longer grass or bobbles or whatever whatever you want to say, maybe a sh smaller pitch, um, rain, sleet, snow, whatever it is. But the, the, I think the same, the same basics apply. And um, I think... Um, if we can, if we can get that right uh, and a right blend of playing in the right areas and the rest of the stuff, what we just met, what I just mentioned, then I think it will be a problem. Great stuff. And uh, next question: What are your key objectives for the first hundred days in charge? And that's from Keith Jones. For the first hundred days in charge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, to, <laughs> the first one is to to survive the first thirty. <laughs> 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 no, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Um, well, like I said earlier, first thing is to get going to get the kid, um, the guys back um, four weeks early. Do one session a week before we go into two sessions a week, which does agreed with the players. A few of them obviously have booked breaks, COVID pending with what's happening with flights and stuff. Yeah. Um, and basically, the first bit is just to get to know the players, see how fit they are, see how strong they are. Um, obviously, get bring a few players in, hopefully, to see for. Um, on trial um, who have been passed on and um, the next thing is to obviously try and get cement my man and Michael's way of pl playing to the squad see what shape fits the players because I'm not one of these who's going to say right I'm going to play a 4-4-2 or 4 2 3 one or you know three at the back with win backs and two in midfield and three at front I need to see the players first see the strengths and weaknesses before and obviously things will change game by game in what the other teams play as well. Um, and um, But they need to know how I want to play in all them systems. So there's a lot of work to do. Um, so it's getting all that done and obviously doing well in pre-season, hopefully staying away from injuries to main players because I think Kulo got a bad injury in pre-season last year, didn't he? And I think Kieran got a bad uh, Achilles injury, didn't he? So staying away from... Okay. Big injuries is a, is a, is a major thing. And um, obviously starting the season off well, starting the season off well, because I think if you start the season off well, it gives you that platform to, to, kick, to kick on and, uh, and do well for the rest of the season. So, you know, um, that's my main aim and, uh, you know, winning football matches at the end of the day and, and, and hopefully putting a team out there that the fans are happy with, as in, you know, with the commitment side of it and, you know, um, also the flip side of what we talked about earlier, you know, the, 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 the playing side of it is, you know, being creative in the final third and exciting the fans. Because at the end of the day, you know, me, I watch nearly every game on TV. I want to see, you know, I want to see goals and 
you know, oh, free yeah, kicks yeah. going in top corner and corners and people coming at back post with headers and, you know, uh, free kick, wide free kicks and little clever set pieces and, you know, stuff like that. And that's what fans want to see and players taking players on and, you know, uh, you know, doing a bit of magic and that. So yeah. hopefully we can try and find the right balance, you know, with it all. Great stuff, mate. Sounds exciting. Um, Cameron Ritchie says, what's your vision for the club? And he says, best of luck, Jono. Well, thank you, first and foremost. Um, my vision for the club is um, having an honest group of guys who who are committed to the, t- committed to the, the club, um, want to play for the fans. A, a, a bit like Ben Godfrey, really, you know, like sponges, want to learn, want to get better um, individually and collectively as a team. Yeah. And have a team that's, you know, hard to beat, you know, got a bit of, guts about them, got a bit of not nastiness about them where they're going to go and, you know, do something bad to another opponent. But, you know, somebody that's not going to back out of a challenge, you know, uh, so somebody who's going to put their head on the line, somebody who's going to put a block on the line, um, someone who's going to run themselves into the ground, someone who's going to play through injuries. Um, and uh, also, like we talked about, you know, um, impressing fans with, you know, clever bits of play and attacking-wise, um, you know, um, good passages of play. I'm not going to say we're going to be one of these teams who just pop it all over the pitch because, you know, um, it's not that kind of league. So we need to have a little bit of mixture of everything. But I want a team that, uh, you know, good, honest group, great team spirit, play for each other, fight for each other, and a good footballers as well, can handle the ball and, and uh, you know, do some magic on the pitch as well. Great stuff. Uh, next question, AD Buck again. Um, obviously, we've had COVID recently. Um, and <clears throat> the fact that fans haven't been down to the ground, you know, as often as they have in the past, how do you uh, hope to attract fans back down to the Flamingo Land Stadium? Well, a bit of what, what I said really is, um, you know, hopefully getting a few sa- signings in, into the club that excite the fans as well. Um, obviously, there's a thing with Paint pay- the Town Red in there that's been going on. Uh, we're trying to get fans back on board. I think it's been, you know, a, a horrendous year for a lot of people. You know, um, a lot of people want to get out of the houses, similar to me. You know, I've got three kids, so I want to get out of my house all the time now. And basically, you know, get the get the younger generation down to support Sky. But like, you know, I did as a kid, you know, I used to absolutely love going to games and, uh, you know, watching uh, Scarborough play and, you know, um, having a cup of Horlicks and a, packet of Chris watching from behind behind the goal and cheering everybody on and, uh, you know, supporting the team. And I think, you know, it's going to take time, obviously. Um, a, a lot of people um, have had a difficult year, but hopefully we can bring some joy back into their lives and get them down, get them supporting the club again, um, get them, you know, watching some good football, committed players who, you know, um, will run through a brick wall for each other and, um, you know, get... Some, some of the younger generation back into this stadium, you know, because there's so many fans there and a lot of people absolutely love football, don't they? So it'd be great for everybody. No, true enough, yeah. And to help you as well, the club's, um, well, to help the manager, uh, the club's running a uh, Back the Borough campaign, uh, which, is, you know, every penny that's raised from that campaign goes into your budget. So obviously you'd, you'd, you'd like a boosted budget and you'd like uh, as much as possible, really, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Every manager wants money. That's a given, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, yeah. If, you know, if, if, if they can back that, that, that'd be absolutely brilliant because, you know, uh, there's a lot of clubs in our league that have got miles bigger budgets than us. So, you know, can probably get a better calibre of player because at the end of the day, the players, all, all they want usually is the money. So uh, um, that's why we have to be clever. That's why we have to be clever with our budget, clever with bringing players in. Um, because we can't go out and give someone 800 quid, you know, a week to, to come to Scarborough. It's just it's not physically possible. So we have to be clever. Um, you know, this thing can obviously help us push our budget up a little bit. It will be brilliant and can get a few better players in. And I'll be absolutely excellent. And I'll be pleased because um, as a manager, you know, where uh, that's what you want is better players in the building. Brilliant stuff. Right, John, you've worked your way brilliantly through our questions there. Uh, just want to thank you, mate. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I'm looking forward to working with you. No, no problems anytime. Um, like I said um, to you a couple of days ago, really, really looking forward to it. You know, um, not 
experienced in the league as a manager, but you know, I've got a, a long career in, in the game, been coaching for seven, eight years. And, you know, I'm really hungry to try and do well and um, try and succeed and, and try and get a team that uh, the town can be proud of. So I'm really looking forward to it. And thanks for your help over the last few, few days. Absolute pleasure, mate. Cheers for that, Tom. No problems, mate.